This is a toilet I visited in Crete, Greece. I want to start with saying that I really like this toilet. It was quite open, it was obvious that effort had been put into the designing and it was mostly clean, which is not something I could say for most other toilets I visited in Greece. But it wasn't perfect. I'll get to that in a moment. First off, I'll start with the entering area. As you can see, it has a nice big wide mirror, which I like. It helps make the room feel bigger rather than tight and confined. The window also helps with this. The sinks have a quite simple design, but there really is no need for them to be any fancier. Their purpose is to wash your hands efficiently, and they do. There's no risk for the water to pour over considering the sink's relatively deep. The faucet is also tall enough and long enough, giving you enough space to wash your hands comfortably. I hate it when sinks are way too shallow and the faucet hardly sticks out above it, forcing your hands to constantly collide with the sides and the bottom of the sink. So good work on this one. This really shouldn't be a point to celebrate, but most toilets fail at this. So I have to give credit where credit's due. Also, thank goodness that the faucet had a handle rather than being motion activated. Why is that good? Motion activated handles, they, they, they don't work. It either doesn't pour out enough water or it pours too much and stops before you're done anyways. With a handle, you can much easier maneuver the amount of water you need. I don't remember if there were any markers indicating which way was hot and which was cold. One can just turn it on and check, but sometimes the temperature takes time to change and with something indicating which way is what, you'll save a couple of seconds. If this sink had indicators, then perfect. If not, then that's hardly a nitpick. The soap dispenser on the wall was loaded with soap, which is more than I can say for many other public toilets. As I was editing, I just noticed that I apparently forgot to record uh, me actually using the soap dispenser, so... Apologies for that. It worked really nicely. When you pressed it, which also was so good, you get to press a button, no motion activation bullshit, the button wasn't too responsive or too hard. When you pressed it, a decent amount of soap came out, not too little or not too much. In terms of functionality, this is one of the best soap dispensers I've ever experienced in a public toilet. It has a generic design, but I won't demand anything more. It works well with the atmosphere they went for here. Also, good on them for having one on each side of the sinks. Sometimes there's only one soap dispenser and you'll have to fight your way awkwardly past other people to get some. It's not fun. Next up, the paper dispenser. This paper dispenser we've got right here in front of us also worked surprisingly well, considering it's motion activated. Lots of great surprises at this toilet. You don't see it so good in the video though, unfortunately. It almost looks like I'm pressing a button, which I didn't. The dispenser presented me with a thick and solid piece of paper. I don't recall if I needed more than one piece of paper or not to dry my hands, but I can't imagine having to use anything more than two. An issue I often experience when it comes to drying uh, your hands after washing them in public toilets is that the paper is too thin, forcing you to use a lot to get your hands properly dry, which then leads to the dispenser more quickly becoming empty. A solution to this would be the air dryers, but fuck air dryers. Might be better for the environment, but they take fucking forever to dry your hands, and they hardly ever work. Next, we have the actual toilet itself. Now, I mentioned that the toilet was mostly clean, and it really is, I'm so impressed. The walls are clean, same with the floor, there are no graffiti, nor any damages. But look at this. Piss on the toilet seat. Problem is, I can't really blame the owners and their cleaners for this. They aren't expected to run in and clean every time someone uses the toilet. The ones at fault are lazy and careless customers. But it really ruins the overall presentation and my experience of this place. I'm not entirely sure how to take this into account when making my final score, it just, it just sucks. What's weird though is that out of all the toilets I visited in Greece, half of them, if not more, had pee stains on their toilet seats. What's up with that? I hardly ever encounter toilets with piss all over them. And then, I come to Greece, and it's fucking piss everywhere on the toilets. Piss aside, this toilet is actually quite great. It isn't broken, it has a seat and a cap, 
and it was comfortable enough to sit on, as comfortable as can be considering it's a toilet. Obviously wouldn't use it over any regular chair. It has two flushes as most toilets do, one for pee, one for poo. They were easy to press. Here you can also see me being an oblivious, ignorant fool for throwing the paper in the toilet rather than in the trash. In Greece, you are supposed to throw the paper in the trash rather than the toilet due to the pipes easily getting clogged, or something along those lines. Speaking of the toilet paper, the way this dispenser works slightly bothers me. The problem I have with it is that it comes out in the form of tiny individual pieces of paper. That's hardly enough for wiping poop off my filthy bum. The paper itself was soft, which of course is nice, it felt good to wipe my bum with it, but I can't wipe my bum with only one tiny piece of paper at a time. The chances are huge for it to tear up as I wipe. I just prefer to choose how much paper I need and then fold it to get some thickness to it, reducing the chances of the paper tearing. Of course, I can just pull out another and then stack them, but that just isn't the same. I know this is a non-issue for most people and that I'm just being picky here, but it doesn't sit right with me. I get why it is that way, because most people have a tendency to pull out far more than they need. So I guess that's good, but no, I, I can't get behind it. The dispenser also looks like you're pulling something out of the bum of someone. A slight unfortunate design choice. The toilet also had a toilet brush, which is very rare in my experiences. But it's very good though, that way you can clean up poop if there is any stuck after you're flushed. Also, I want to make a quick comment on the lamps above the sinks. I really enjoy them, as I seem to do with most stuff in this toilet. They feel very unique, almost to the point that they don't fit in. Considering the sinks and the dispenser have very generic designs, it's kind of weird to have the lamps look as intricate as they do, but thanks to the nicely textured and dark tiles on the walls, I feel they still work. I would really love it if the ropes were blue, so that they would go with the blue dispenser and the doors, but I won't hold that against them. It would also be a little weird with blue ropes, I guess, but then again it would just match so nicely. I'm also impressed by the fact that they have a drain on the floor. Another detail I'm not used to seeing at public toilets. Maybe I just haven't visited enough public toilets. Or maybe I haven't paid enough attention. I'm assuming it's for scenarios where the pipes get clogged by dumbasses like myself and the water pours over. Or other scenarios. And I think that's about it. I Again, I really, really like this toilet. It's clean, it's functional, the floor was good to walk on and looked good. That and the walls had a nice texture and color to it. I generally like the gray, white, blue color palette this toilet has going for it. Blue paper dispenser, blue toilet paper dispenser, and blue doors. It's a real shame that the trash can is red. I allow the ropes to get away with sort of breaking with the color scheme, but the trash can is just far too big of an offender. Also, the sign on the wall with a joke on feels kind of out of place. It just seems tacky and there is nothing else in the toilet that backs it up. I sort of get it, I think. It's meant to lighten the mood. You go to the toilet, you do your business and get a joke. But it doesn't really make sense, cause the female toilet wasn't to the right anyways. For it to properly work, it would have to be placed outside both the toilets, in between the male and the female one. Before I move on to my final rating, I'd like to mention one last thing. This toilet belonged to a fairly large dining place. Not sure if to call it a restaurant. So when taking into account the size of this place, it's quite odd that they don't have more than two toilet stalls. What's even weirder is that there are no urinals. That's, that's really weird in my opinion. Now I've talked about everything I could think of, so I guess it's time for me to give my final rating. To summarize, this toilet, with the exception of the one toilet seat, is very clean. It's nicely designed, nothing too extravagant, it's quite minimalistic, hasn't made any bold choices, but what it did choose, what it did go for, is still very good. Its main focus area, as I see it, is to be functional. And that's what it all should really be about, isn't it? Is it clean? 
Is it functional? Those are the two main criteria any decent toilet should strive to fulfill. Everything else is just nice bonuses. But this toilet is still not getting a 10 out of 10. Why? It has a toilet paper dispenser I'm not the biggest fan of, the trash can should have been blue, the joke sign doesn't fit in and there being only two toilet stalls and no urinals is what keeps it from receiving a full score. I also believe that for a public toilet to achieve a full score, it has to go the extra mile. It can't just be only functional and clean, it has to be bold, it has to make a risk. And what that looks like, I do not know. Haven't encountered a 10 out of 10 yet. I ultimately give this toilet an 8 out of 10. That's it for now, I hope it was an experience and I'll see you later. Vale!